if you're making a pattern and recreating a stock pattern kind of like a match the hatch for a name brand you want to take a look at pictures of it first you always want to do that because you really can't rely on something that might be newer for example this is an XR50 from Excalibur prior to when Booyah bought them out this color is not the same Rayburn red that the Booyah is it's a little bit different and it's a lot more red the Booyah is orange and we're going to show you the difference so this is in true color the printer prints in true color it's a match to this particular photograph we're going to go ahead and print that out you always want to print if you're doing something like this and it's something that you might be doing several times you want to put it on the best output for printing that you can because you may need the pattern again same with the mouse or any other match the hatch I did it for a bunch of discus and I'll show you how that turned out the other day um, I'll show you later on in the video but today I have a client that is requesting the uh, the Rayburn red color which is a very difficult hard to find color I've seen it go for as high as like thirty dollars per lure um, the the big difference between the Excaliburs and the Booyahs, well there's a few but the biggest is that the Excalibur put really high quality metal BBs in for the rattle sound Booyah uses plastic BBs and it's a completely different sound so those people that have this bait as a confidence lipless bait really want that original color and the original sound so what we'll do is we'll find Excalibur 50s, XR 50s, not the one knocker, that's the XRKs, but this is the BBs. And we will get them in as many different colors as we can for the client, and then we're going to transfer that over to this particular color and pattern. Um, let's take a look at what printed out. This is going to be what we're using today. For all of these. Now, I've got six in a small size. This is actually a Damiki Trimmer 65, um, and it also uses the the copper BBs, the metal BBs, which is a really unique sound. And then I have six uh, various color XR100s. So we're doing a total of 12 today. So what we're going to do is show you guys a run. We're going to show you a match the hatch. And we're going to show you that it's a whole lot different than this orange looking thing right here. It's a lot deeper red color. There is orange in it. But we're going to mix up some paint. We're going to get started. I've already got the white primer on here. And for the Damikis, the client has asked that I fill in just a little bit more. He wants the eye area smoother. Um, which really, when you look at it side by side, both of them, let's get this up where you guys can see this, both of these have divots in their eyes. So maybe it looks a little bit different in a photograph, but there really isn't a whole lot of filling in to do to smooth that eye. And then uh, the Rayburn Red does use the red eyes. So the Damiki comes with black stock eyes, so we're going to repaint that. Now one thing you've noticed is that I haven't pulled the 3D eyes out of these baits, and there's a reason for that. Some of these um, brand names will put in eyes and super glue them in to such a degree where pulling the eyes out is going to do some damage to this eye socket around there because this is plastic. It's plastic on both of these. Um, it's been pressed from a mold just like everything else and it would be even worse if it were balsa. It would really do damage. Um, to the look and the shape of this. So we're going to leave it alone. There's a couple ways that we can do that at the end. With these XRs, now these are Excaliburs, they're just larger. Um, all of the Excaliburs have the red eyes, so I can kind of gently buff that out after we're done painting the pattern. And then for this, most likely what I'm going to do is just spray in a little bit of iridescent red and put a pupil in this and then just give it some really cool shading and do the eye as it is. So let's get started.
one of the things that I like to do when I'm mixing colors, especially when I'm mixing colors, I want to go ahead and put this down into a smaller bottle. I usually keep pretty large sizes of paints for stuff that I use a lot of. Red is one of them. So I'll usually have I think this is an 8 ounce. This is an 8 ounce or larger. Sometimes I'll do the 16 or even 32 ounces of primary colors. But as a as I'm using every day, I kind of draw from this and this stuff over here more than I want to pick up a heavy bottle because this is just easier to manage for me. So we're going to get started with some colors. Um, showing you what's in the lineup today. Of course, we've used a, a base flat white for the primer, and this is my mix. So if you guys want to know what my mix is, it's pretty simple. I use a Createx pearlized white with a standard jacquard white, which is back here. I know I've got a bunch of... We'll see if I can pull that into... And I'm just about out, but I use this airbrush permanent acid-free. This is water-based. Um, it's a transparent white, but it does add and thin the Createx regular white that I use. So this starts out with half a bottle of opaque Createx white, pearlized white, and the jacquard. And that's generally what goes into making this. Occasionally, if I'm running low on the opaque, um, the Createx, I'll throw in a little folk art, but folk art is a beast to work with because it's not meant for airbrushing, number one. It's an acrylic and it's used, used for canvas, for crafting, and for painting, for two-dimensional painting like artists use. Um, and it has a tendency to cake really bad. Um, if you cannot use stuff that's not meant for airbrushing, please don't. If you need to for budgetary concerns, then use a proper reducer, either the Auto Air Colors 411 or the Wicked 412, 4012 um, is really going to help you because this does have to be reduced down a good bit. Now, if you don't want to go to the hassle, then I understand, and I haven't used these, but, but recommendations from Michael and a lot of other people in the industry. The Golden and the Aztec, the Tester's Aztec paints are really good for whites, so give those a shot if you're looking for a white that you can just lay on. I like to mix my own only because I've kind of come up with a formula that works really, really well for me, and especially when I'm doing spray overs on name brand baits, this flat that I've come up with has a tendency to stick on that bait um, with very minimal scuffing so the prep time is a little bit less for me and which is great because I'm usually doing runs of 12, of 20s, of 30s um, for anglers that are going to be using this stuff in tournaments so that's basically why I do what I do the colors that we're going to use today obviously are going to be Createx colors it's an opaque black a bright transparent red a bright sunset red color 5118 a deep red and a canary yellow. And we're not going to mix them in cups. We're going to fade them down right on the bait. The accent color that we're going to be using, I'm going to create my own because you can see that on this particular pattern, we've got um, some almost craw identifications and hand painted dots, although I'm sure a machine did that. Um, we've got five striping marks along the belly on the side. And then we've got two, three, four, five crayfish marks and then some random dot patterns. I'm going to get that as close as I can, but we are going to use, going to have to use two, so I'm going to have to cut two separate pieces um, for this. And it shouldn't be that difficult to do it all just to match it. No, I don't have a 3D graphing program, but I do have a couple of people in the industry that are really good at it. Number one, Corey Van Vonderen. Um, he's an image bait painter and he's really good at his craft and he does a lot of the, the 3D um, I think he's got a 3D printer now too but he does a lot of the stencil uh, cutouts the other guy that I would always recommend is Russ Allen at Insane Custom Stencils he's got uh, a myriad of, of wheels and, and stencils that he uses on a regular basis so check those two guys out you can find them all over the web all over Facebook um, Corey hangs out at Fishtails. He runs a tackle store up north where the free folk are. 
And uh, Russ, I believe, is in the south somewhere. So you've got two really good people to go to. Um, that's my little stent on stenciling. But we're going to cut our own today for the purposes of this video. And we're going to do that somewhere midway through the video. But we're not going to cut any kind of colors together in mixing cups. We're going to spray them right down on the bait. So let's get started doing that. And before we get started, Interflon, Finn Super, is sponsoring this video. So thank you guys for that. They asked me to test the product out. Um, I'm in no way, shape, or form obligated or contracted by these guys, but they just really wanted to see how I liked it. Um, they know I do a lot of videos on YouTube, so they wanted to see how this would hold up against like a real magic or real butter or any other thing that you would use to clean off your reels and clean the grit and grime. It's like multi-use, multi-purpose. This stuff is really good. You want to use it in a well-ventilated area. It is greaseless, colorless, odorless, and when I say greaseless, I mean that because there's been so many times when I've sprayed onto my reel and then you get that residue afterwards. This does not come off and stick on your hands. Um, but it is suitable for a variety of applications. Try it today. Check out Interflon. Interflon. Sorry if I butchered your name, but I'm pretty sure it's Interflon. Um, Finn Super. Try it. You'll like it. I do. And I stand by that. It's always good to have a bait here as a reference, and though I said that earlier it's a little bit more orange than the original Excalibur used to be, it is close enough to where we can keep it as a reference because you can see that it's light. It's got that yellowish belly on the bottom into an orange. There is a little bit of red up in here. Not as much as we need for this bait, but then the black on top. So it's, we're going to put this right in front of the three Alice right here and just kind of hang on to that as a reference. First thing that we're going to do, you know that I like to work from light to dark. So we're going to throw that canary yellow and we might even put just a little accent of this Wicked in here. This Wicked color, this golden yellow, man, it matches so many colors when you're doing name brand matching out there. So this is a really good, it's a little bit darker than a primary yellow. It's got a little bit of red in it. Um, but man, this is just, this is a fantastic yellow for bellies on the lures that you're going you're gonna to be spraying if you guys are doing any kind of match the hatch stuff. If you come over and take a look at the pressure, we're running about 45. We're blasting through this because we have a lot to do and we want to keep that flow going. So usually I'll crank up the, crank up the pressure for base coats. Again, you want to kind of make sure that there's nothing yucky, junky like this when you're opening up this bottle for the first time. And we're going to load this more than I normally would load it. All we're going to do is we're going to come along the bottom. If you notice, yes, I have cranks and stuff. I've got blanks under here before we really get started on this. You notice all of them are in Ziplocs. Folks, if you have, let me just take a second because I really like to explain why I do what I do. If you have a lot of blanks or you have orders, this is an order, this is an order. Um, I keep orders, but you don't want to just leave them laying out. When you buy blanks, they're expensive enough as it is. Um, make sure you take care of them. Put them in Ziplocs so that the paint, because this paint that atomizes, I don't know if you can see where Rascal is laying, but this part of the rug looked exactly like that part of the rug about a year ago, a couple of years ago. I guess that's how long I've had this rug out here in the shop. Um, but that's just atomization. That's just paint. It'll never come up. And that fine mist will cover everything. I mean, you can see it's even <laughs> it's even on that chair. So it, it's far-reaching. So the stuff that you can protect, please do protect it. That's just my little soapbox for how to properly take care of your blanks and your baits. We're just going to come along here and throw a light mist on the bottom of every single one. It doesn't matter if I'm doing large to small, small to large, get that belly. It's okay if you do a little bit of overspray. We're going to run these fast. Um, we're going to run them fast on purpose because we have a lot to get through because this is not the only set of lures that we're going to be doing today. But they're fairly simple patterns to get through. So these are Pretty much we're just doing the video for the purpose of showing you guys how to do a large run. And this is a question that I've gotten before. 
I left a little bit, um, these Damikis, the Tremor 65s that we're running um, in place of the XR50s for this client. Um, they're very transparent um, and they they have a tendency to look really sharp when you leave the bellies a little bit more transparent. We couldn't do that on the XRs, on the actual Excaliburs, and you can see I have them out of the package, but you can see that Excalibur down there. This is the real deal. And nine times out of ten, folks, you're going to find that I prefer to use brand names when I can. There are a few exceptions to the rules. Um, the square bills that are out there that are blanks that are pressed from Lucky Crafts are very good. The Dinger S-Cranks that are out there that are pressed from Mega Bass S-Cranks are very good. Um, and also Dinger's Duos. Um, and, and some of the... He does a, a M65, which is in Dinger, it's the D65. And those are extremely good, too. They swim the same. But there's, there's a lot of blanks and baits out there that just don't. And if you're a hobbyist and you're just playing around and you want to have some fun and you're not a tournament angler, by all means, there's a lot of pretty decent baits out there that you can get. I would recommend that you guys experiment and uh, kind of buy a lot of blanks from a lot of places just to find from you know for yourself what's going to work best for you. And that's it. We've got 12 baits with the primary color on here now, on the base color. I still have a little bit left, and I actually have enough left in here that we're going to go ahead and dump it back in the bottle. It doesn't get all hard because we want to re reserve all the stuff that we can. So if you guys do have extra, it's not a bad idea to try and preserve it if you can. Okay, I'm just following this up with a little bit of this Wicked Golden Yellow. Just kind of running real quick along the bottom edges of each of these baits. Not spending a whole lot of time with it. Because again, we're pretty much just imitating a very simple pattern. Put just a little dab more of this. And hit this last one. Okay, we are finished with these. I always try and clean up as I go. The next color we need to have, actually, you know what? Pull out just a little bit of regular old orange. And because we're fading up, we can just lightly coat this. And just keep moving right on down the line. At least it may, it may be different for you guys, but for me, it's a little bit easier if I line all these things up and just pull them off as I'm going. And it also helps me get a little bit uh, more proficient. Don't need to spend a whole lot of time on the orange on this particular shade because we're going to spray a second layer over it. We just want to get this base orange set. And you always want to, if you're fading colors, um, you want to work with the paints wet. Don't heat set in between. Because they just blend so much nicer. You have to be a little bit heavier on the bigger baits. There's just a little bit more real estate to cover. It may seem like I'm working fast. I'm really not. Um, there's just a lot to get through, but again, this is a pretty, 
pretty basic. I don't know if you guys saw that. So this little piece of goop came out. You can just pull that off with your finger. Luckily it's in a spot where it's really not going to hamper anything because that's going to be a darker orange that we go into next. And then we'll spray the red over that. So you always want it again, not to beat a dead horse, but work light to dark. And if you follow that principle for most of the things that you do, with few exceptions, there's always a few exceptions to the rule, you go light to dark on your baits, and you notice I'm working across, I'm keeping, I'm turning this on right as I'm going across the bait, turning it off, and it's going to save your paint. It's also going to give you a much more even coat. Hit this. There we go. And now we can go into our darker. Fill that up. Start at the beginning. Now you can see where we're getting darker. And then just be a little bit more mindful, use a little bit more trigger control on the smaller baits. Because you want to be able to notice that fade. You don't want to just like go yellow to and then you're spraying over everything. You want to be able to see that transition and fade. And if you are working towards the top, you can even angle the bait off so that you're not going down. You're kind of shooting across the top of the bait. And just repeat the process for each one that you're going through. The top isn't super important. I know I hit it on that particular one. This creature of habit. Kind of separate these. I'm kind of getting bunched up here. And while I'm not a machine, um, these are not going to be perfectly aligned. They're going to be real close. They're going to be super close. And when, I, when I'm talking about that, I mean just the areas that I'm hitting. Ah, I got a little gunk in there. There we go. A lot of times if you push off to the side, press down real hard on your trigger, you can get that gunk out. Now this is a good example. You can really see that transition. The two shades of orange and the yellow belly. Of course, it's easier to see when you do have more real estate. And just a couple more little bits of red. And I'm sorry, this is a sunset red. It's actually a really deep orange. It's a good bit deeper than the transparent regular orange. And last but certainly not least, Ah, got that spray over. Gosh dang it. A little bit of goop coming out. And I don't like that there. I tell you, this, this little bait down here on the end is uh, really giving me a time. So here's how we're going to take care of that. Just try and lift that up with this. Pull that on and do the same. Just kind of pop that off with a dry Q-tip. And then all we're going to do is just come back over and respray it. Pop that in the trash can. The other side is good. Come back with a little bit lighter 
so we can see that transition. We're going to kind of work backwards down this bait because it did get into a part where, there we go. Now we're better. Let's get that red going. Let's pick up, oh, we got some junk in here. Let's get all the junk out of the top of this red. We've picked our red up. This should be a fairly quick spray too. Because eh, I've got red all over my hands. That sucks. Always keep a towel nearby. Now, if we are to look at this bait up here, you guys can see that the red is almost in the middle of this bait, not all the way at the top. So what we're going to try and recreate here is I'm going to turn the pressure down for the red since this is a darker color. And there goes Rascal. <sighs> yeah. Oh, so before we get all mad at this little guy, because I know he barks in a lot of my videos, let me explain something to you about him. This is Rascal. Hey everybody, meet Rascal. Yep, get out of the camera. So, Rascal came from a very rough place when he was a puppy. He's always going to have probably some mental issues. And he barks. He wakes himself up out of a sleep barking. I know a lot of folks say little dogs have uh, have issues to begin with, but he's got more than the rest. He was a rough rescue, and uh, now he's in a good place. So can't get mad at him. And Molly, Molly, Molly loves him too. You gonna stop barking, boy? Mm -hmm. All right, just sleep. Okay, we have loaded our chamber with regular old transparent bright red. Okay, and if you guys notice something, just take a minute and check this out with me. Let me pop this up here. The red in this picture is kind of through the middle. Not necessarily. Now, I know that there is a light reflection from where the photo was shot on this bait. But there is a darker red through the middle of this. So we've turned the air pressure down from about 45 to, oh, I'd say roughly 15. I'm going to go through one time on this. Light pressure. Okay. Same thing with the little guys. Same thing with the little guys. We're just repeating. Just one pass. Up and back. And do that for each bait. Lower pressure. Lighter touch on the trigger. Lower pressure, lighter touch on the trigger, and just come right down the middle of the bait from the eye to the tail, or tail to the eye, whichever one you do. Just make sure you get one good even coat on there. Okay, now, when we look at this bait, when we look at how it's shaping up, you're going to start to notice some similarities. I don't want to touch any of the wet paint that's on there now. 
But again, this Booyah does not have the red that the Excalibur does. But when you pull that Excalibur photo down, you can see that the colors have lined up almost identically. The other thing that we're going to do, just on the top, hit that with red. Now, you can lay out your plan for how you're going to spray a bait. And then when you see the paint scheme come together on the actual bait, you can always change your mind about a couple of things. For example, I am not going to use this deep transparent red on this bait at all. I'm just going to overspray this red on the top with black. And you want to have a nice thin, you don't want to spray down the sides of this bait when you're doing the top with red. Now I will say this, the other thing about doing a run this way, if you try to do this one bait at a time, like do this and then go on to another bait, you're going to have a heck of a time matching up exactly how you did stuff, whereas if it's in a run and you're creating a pattern of spraying for yourself, much easier to do this way because you kind of get this rhythm going. You just come down straight, it's just like an assembly line straight down the line and spray one paint and then the next paint and then the next paint and then the next paint and then the detailing and then whatever kind of cleanup you need to do pop it in the clear coat and you're done. I kind of like to clean as I go so um, one of the things that we're always going to do is clean up the paints that we use and again I decided not to use this deep red We are ready for our black transparent, light spray. I'm going to turn the pressure down even more, and we're just going to bring this out and hit the top. Real light mist. You want to keep this black on the top of the bait and not down the sides. Let me get that out of the way because I kind of want to set that aside as I'm finishing. Now this is going to heat set before we put the detailing on. It has to. Okay. We're going to heat set this stuff and come back and do our gold detailing. We're going to cut out the pattern for it because that's something that we absolutely have to do. And we need to cut out two different sizes because we have a big bait and a little bait. And then we're just about going to be ready to take care of some clear coat. And that's going to do it. This is the Rayburn Red Pattern. Get some popcorn. Grab some drinks. Coming right back. We are now going to create two separate stencils for this and we're just going to create the stencils for the little craw pattern up here these little semicircle C's on the side of the bait we're only going to do it for that because I can hand paint in the gold everything else that needs to go on here but we kind of want to make sure that that part of it the craw segment that's in this Rayburn Red is accurate 
And we have to do it for two because we're working with two different size baits. Super easy. We really, I've heat set these. Um, don't need to do a whole lot with the bait other than, oh, let's see, where's my blackhead? I want a black magic marker. No, that'll, that'll do. So we want to kind of line up to the end of the bait right about where we're going to have our pattern. So I'm putting one little mark on this where the eye hook is and then I'm also putting one little mark at the nose. So that's going to give us a basic idea of how big that bait is. That way we never have to take it off of the stand. It can sit right there. Now this is obviously going to be larger. So we're going to do the same thing with that. Move it to the bottom. Put that one little mark right there where the eye hook is. That's also going to indicate, and maybe on well, this one since it's bigger, we'll put one more dot, which is where the gill plate comes up to, right there. And you know what? We're going to pull that smaller bait back out, and we're going to do the same thing with that just to represent where that gill plate is. That's where the eye hook is. The gill plate is right behind that. So then, once we have that done, it's down where you can see it, I'm just going to loosely cut the same size. There's the nose of the bait. And there's that. Divot, divot, one to represent where the hook is, the, uh, eye, the eye hook, and the gill plate. Same thing here. Divot, just cut into that a little bit, where the eye hook is, and the gill plate. And then, pretty easy, because we're just going to draw and go back to our In that, when we're looking at this, we'll do the big one first. It's easier for you guys to see, I think. When we line that up and we look at there, so you're looking at the eyes, and, and here's what I'm doing. As a matter of fact, let me take this. When we pull this off and we're looking at this bait, this is actually the first time that we're kind of getting a better look at our paint scheme, but we also want to put this against here kind of get an outline. We're going to run that to the back of the bait and this is loosely where the eye is which really doesn't matter but what is important is that this eye hook is right over top of this first C and then we have even spaced other C's that semicircle so we represented that this was our eye hook and this was where the gill plate was in this bait. And if you go back to that, that's exactly where it is. That's where the gill hook or the gill plate comes. So then this comes just about all the way to the top. So we're just going to make that C. And then one behind it. And then one behind it. And then one behind it. And then one more. And I'm kind of trying to space this even down the back of this so that it's going to look like that. And we're going to cut that. We're going to do the same thing for this bait. We're going to line it up. Make sure everything's copacetic. That's where your eye hook is, which means your first little cross segment mark is going to come right down behind it. And then one behind that. Remember, you're working smaller here. Four and five. And remember, you guys are not machines. I'm not a machine, so this is not going to look exactly like that, but we are going to get really close. Now 
Okay, and there we have it. So now we just need to cut those. We're going to use an exacto knife to do that. And I'm going to show you what it looks like over here at the finishing bench. Hey, Molly. The cool thing about dogs is they hang out all the time in the shop. It's pretty neat. So all I'm doing is just taking this and cutting that semicircle in. It's not going to be super thick. It's actually going to be quite thin. And then I'm going to do that for all the rest of them. Now one thing, there's a couple, couple ways that we can play this. First way to play it is to line up this with the bait and spray white over top of what we've already done. And we can do that as long as we are accurate with the gold and lining this up again when we spray the gold. Or we can use a really thick pearl or metallic gold. Now Spectratex paints are pretty, pretty thick I know that the blue looks really good against the uh, the other colors and it stands out. You don't have to add a primer before it. I've never used their gold, but we're going to see if we can be a little bit more exact. I just want to make sure that this comes out the way it's supposed to. So one thing I always preach to you guys is before you put something on the bait itself, especially if it's something that you're doing for the first time, you haven't done it, or if it's a brand new stencil, you want to see how this is going to look on some scrap paper before you actually take the plunge and drop it down onto a bait. And that's really important because a lot of times what you'll find is that there's little pieces that are stuck to the sides of this, especially if you're using cardboard like this. But you really, you just don't want it there. So you want to make a little bit of extra time and just get this right because you really want these to be clean lines. They don't have to be exact lines, but they shouldn't look all messed up either. You really just want to go ahead and do the extra work, cut that little little piece out to make sure you're getting the best stencil on here that you can. Same thing with this. There we go. And then just pull that out. Pull it right off of that cardboard. And that should do it, ladies and gentlemen. Just make sure you do the best with what you've got. And we're going to lay this down one more time. See what the pattern looks like. Peel that up. And that looks pretty good. That looks like we know what we're doing. And you can just wipe this right off and we'll throw this excess paper out. Really don't need it. And now we're ready to apply it to our bait. <laughs> 